Hello everyone. Welcome back to Teaching in Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia and I'm one of the second grade teachers at the Soulard School. But here for Teaching in Room 9, I teach math for second graders, but I encourage everybody to join. Welcome back friends. It's so good to see you and I'm really excited to be here with you together and work on practicing even more with the patterns we've been working on lately. I hope that you're having a good day, um, that you're feeling nice and focused, centered, ready to learn, um, and I hope that you're having a great start to your school year. I appreciate you guys joining me and I'm glad that you can come back and practice some math skills here together. All right, you guys know that I start with our mindful minute exercise. And we practice these mindfulness exercises so that uh, when we start to feel these really big emotions, especially lately with all of the crazy stuff going on, then we can practice some of these uh, different activities that we do together. And then that will help us to feel really present in the moment and recenter our bodies and our brains so that we are ready to learn. All right, so yesterday I had mentioned that um, since we've been working on with patterns and we know that patterns go on and on, um, we've been doing some kind of rolling uh, exercises as well. So we'll do the same thing today where we're doing some mindful breathing together. And uh, then instead of rolling our neck, this time we will roll our shoulders. All right, so if you're sitting in a chair, go ahead and sit up nice and straight. Okay, I'm gonna relax my shoulders and my neck but I'm gonna sit up nice and straight and tall. This way, when I take a deep breath in, I really open up my diaphragm and I can really let those deep breaths in and fill my lungs with air. All right, take a deep breath in through your nose, count to three, and then breathe out through your mouth, counting to three. Okay, breathe in. And out. In, one, two, three, breathe out, one, two, three, in through your nose, out through your mouth. Nice job, friends. Continue taking those deep breaths in and out in and out feel your chest rise as you fill your lungs with air and feel it fall as you exhale letting those uh, deep breaths out all right friends so i'd like you as you're taking these deep breaths to roll your shoulders very slowly forward. Still breathing in, out. It loosens up some of that tension you might be having in your shoulders. Okay. Now continue taking deep breaths. We're going to go backwards. Already feel some of that tension that I've been feeling loosening up. Go ahead and stretch your neck to one side, to the other side. Maybe give it a quick roll. Okay, one last deep breath in. Nice job, friends. I hope that you're feeling more centered and ready to learn. And then um, we can jump right into working with our number patterns again today. So we always start with our learning goals or objectives. And again, it was the same learning goals last week. So we have I can look for and make patterns. We're really just trying to train your math brain to be able to see when numbers or shapes are grouped together, how they are arranged according to a rule and find out what that pattern is. And then once we know what the pattern is, we are able to extend onto the pattern. So even though we've been practicing patterns for so very long, we started making patterns in preschool, even when we were very little, 
and uh, we're just sort of growing and extending onto that, working with patterns more, um, with more complicated math for this year, and you'll continue to add on to that more and more as you get older and math becomes a little bit more challenging each time. Okay. All right, friends. So we went over a learning goal. I'd like for us to sing our song together. Uh, remember, we sang it last week. We're singing it again this week, but we're adding on to it. We're extending on to our song uh, so that it includes all of these different rules with number patterns as well. Okay. And again, our um, tune to this song is the ants go marching, which I know all my friends know that tune. Um, so hopefully this is starting to stick in your brains and I hope you guys can sing along with me at home as you become more familiar. Okay, friends, you ready? Okay. A pattern, it goes on and on, hurrah, hurrah. A pattern, it goes on and on, hurrah, hurrah. A pattern, it goes on and on. It could be shapes or numbers too. And when we solve the pattern rule, then we can extend, bum, bum, bum. A pattern can be growing or repeating. A pattern can be growing or repeat. Repeating, a pattern can be growing where you add on more and more each time, or the pattern will repeat in all these ways. Bum, 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 a number pattern that's repeating can increase. A number pattern that's repeating could decrease. A number pattern when you add or subtract the same each time is a repeating pattern that will go up or down, bum, 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 a number pattern that is growing can increase, number pattern that is growing could decrease, number pattern that is growing you'll add on more each time, or you will subtract more each time, bum, 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 bum. Yay, nice job. You guys are getting so good at that song and singing along with me at home. I know that whenever I sing the song, it is stuck in my brain for the rest of the day. So I'm hoping that it's sticking in your brains as well and helping you to understand both geometric shape patterns and number patterns better. All right, friends, so I'd like to just kind of review what we had talked about last time going through our number patterns chart because there is a lot of different vocabulary. We talked about that, that it's important for us to understand what these math terms mean so that we don't feel overwhelmed. It's very easy for us to start to feel overwhelmed or when you look at a string of numbers and you have no idea what the pattern rule is, it feels overwhelming. So in order for us to feel confident in being able to solve a math problem, we need to understand the vocabulary or the words that are in the problem. So we know what it's asking for us to do, and then we can figure out how to solve in order to find the answer. All right, so number patterns up here at the top. We're gonna to start on this side. Increasing again means what? You got it. Increasing means it is getting bigger each time. If we are increasing in a pattern, you are going to add or subtract. You got it. Increasing, we're going to add. You're putting numbers together and you're adding on each time. But if it is increasing and repeating, not growing, repeating, then it's going to repeat the same number each time. So you're going to add on the same number each time. And we had mentioned yesterday as well that as you guys get older and start doing more complicated or challenging math, you can also increase by not just adding, but multiplying as well. So we're really practicing getting really familiar and confident with adding and subtracting so that next year you guys can feel super confident in being able to also multiply or divide. All right. So we looked at this first number pattern in the increasing repeating. So I know by those two vocab words, we are adding on, it's getting bigger, but it will repeat each time. It'll be the same number each time. And so we looked at this one here, that was three, six, nine, twelve. We found that our pattern rule was that we are adding on three, 
So we were able to extend adding on three to the number 12, which again is, nice job, 15. Then we came down to this one here and it was five, 10, 15, 20. I bet a lot of my friends at home immediately made that connection to skip counting by fives. And maybe you even made the connection to when we were learning about time and having to skip count by fives around the clock. So I was able in my math brain to see that pattern really quickly. I knew right away my pattern rule was to add on five each time. So adding on five to 20 was, yep, 25. And then we could keep adding on. I bet you guys can skip count by five super easily. So then we jumped over to this side here, decreasing, repeating. So decreasing, again, I know that means it is getting smaller. My numbers are going down each time. In order to go down each time, you have to take away or subtract. Uh, we looked at this one here, 50, 43, 36, 27, and we knew because, again, that it is repeating that we're taking away the same number each time. So when we looked at this, maybe even if you didn't recognize right away, because seven is not one of those like automatic where you have it, that fat fluency in your brain. Um, we again, practice it going step by step. Okay, how do I get from 50 to 43? And then you might've realized that we are taking away seven and then you continued to practice and saw that our pattern rule was to take away by seven each time. And then it got to 27, take away seven was, Yep, 20. Nice job. And then we come down to this one here. And this one again, too, hopefully in your math brains, um, you're feeling so confident by skip counting by twos that even though it was decreasing or taking away or getting smaller each time, you could still recognize right away maybe that they're all even numbers and that helped you to figure out that pattern rule. So here our numbers went from 20 to 18 to 16 to 14 to 12. And that pattern rule is we were taking away or subtracting two each time. So if I had 14 and I took away two, how many did I have? Yep, you had 12. Nice job. Now we're jumping down to here. And again, I see those same words up top. Increasing again means to get bigger. And in order to get a bigger number, not a smaller, you are going to add or subtract. You guys are awesome. I knew you'd get this so easily. We're going to add. So if we are increasing, we are going to add. And like I said, again, in third grade, you can end up, you can also multiply as well. So here we are adding, but it's not repeating. So it's not the same number each time. It is growing, right? So we are going to add on more each time. So it's not going to be the exact same number. So we looked at our first pattern where it said two, four, seven, 11. Okay, and again, when you feel overwhelmed or unsure of what that pattern rule is right away, maybe you're not like, oh, we're skip counting by fives, easy peasy, I figured it out. Maybe you're like, oh, it's two, four, seven, I don't know. So our easiest way to figure it out is just take it step by step. So we go from two to four. How do I go from two to four? How much do I need to add on? You got it, friends. You're adding on two. Then how to go from four to seven? How much do I need to add on? Yep, you're adding on three. So first it was two and then it was three. Okay, I have a feeling I know what it is. Let's see, go to, from seven to 11, you have to add how many? Yep, you're adding on four. So it was two, then three, then four. So now I know in order to extend, how many do I have to add on? You got it, friends. If it was adding on two, then three, then four, we're adding on five. So 11 plus five is how much? Yep, it was 16, nice job. Then we came down here and we looked at this, 10, 15, 25, 40. 
You might even be looking right away, even if you don't realize right off the bat how much you are increasing or adding on each time. Something that my math brain notices is this one's digit and each one is either a zero or a five. Maybe you didn't notice that the first time, but I'm noticing here that it is either a zero or a five. In order for it to always be a zero or a five, it's probably gonna be adding on some type of five. So let's look at it a little more closely. We went from 10 to 15. How do we get from 10 to 15? How much do I add on? You got it, friends. You're adding on five. Then to get from 15 to 25, how much do I add on? Yep, you add on 10. Then 25 to 40, how much do I add on? Yeah, you're adding on 15. So first it was five. Then we were adding 10. Then we were adding 15. So if I want to extend, how many am I going to add on this time? What is my pattern rule here? You're right, friends. We are increasing by fives each time. First it was five, then 10, then 15. So the next one would be 20. Nice job. So if I'm adding 20 plus 40, how much would it be? You see my number here is 60. Nice job. And like I said, we can extend on even more by adding on 5, 10, 15, 20. Next would be 25. And then we practiced that yesterday, 60, 70, 85 would be our next number. Now I'm going to come over to this site. It is decreasing. So again, friends, am I adding or taking away if it's decreasing? You got it. Decreasing is getting smaller. Increasing gets bigger. Decreasing gets smaller. So in order to decrease or get smaller, we have to subtract or take away. So, um, and we know it's growing though, so it's not gonna be the same number each time. So we looked at our first one right here. It was 43, 41, 38, 34. My brain immediately thinks, oh man, I don't know what that is right off the bat. So I know I've got to look at each piece and then I start putting it together and I can figure out what my rule is. So how do I get from 43 to 41? How much do I take away? Yep, 43, 42, 41. So I took away two, you got it. So I took away the two there. So then I went from 41 to 38. Let's see, 41, 40, 39, 38. How many did I take away? Yep, three. So first I took away two and then I took away three. Then 38 to 34, how many am I taking away? Nice job, four that time. So it was two, then three, then four. So in order to extend, how many do I need to take away this time? You got it, friends. If we took away two, then three, then four, next time we would take away five. So what's 34 minus five? Let's figure it out together. 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, giving me 29. Nice job, and that's what we have right here. And then the last one that we figured out here, we started with 100. Then we went down to 90, then to 70, then to 40. I noticed right away, we're taking some pretty big jumps there. So I know that the number that I am taking away is probably going to be larger numbers, right? I also am noticing in my math brain that all of these are ending in zeros. So pardon me, I know that that means we are going to be taking away by probably tens, right? Because it's all zeros. We don't see any fives, we don't see twos, we don't see odd numbers or even numbers or additional even numbers. We just see zeros. So I know that it's going to be like tens each time. So let's look at it closer. 100 minus what gives me 90? Nice job. 100 minus 
10 gives you 90. Then how do I go from 90 all the way down to 70? How much do I need to take away? Amazing, friends. 90 minus 70 is 20. So first it was minus 10, then minus 20. Then in order to go from 70 to 40 is, I got to take away, is 10, 20, 30. Nice job. 70 minus 30 gives us 40. So if I took away 10, then 20, then 30, how many do I need to take away this time in order to extend our pattern? Yeah, you got it. If it was 10, 20, 30, now I would need to take away 40. But look at my number here. It's what number? Yeah, it's 40. So 40, take away 40 gives us how many? Yep, a big old goose egg. Exactly, zero. Nice job. Okay, and then let's just briefly go over again the vocabulary at the bottom. Geometric patterns are shape patterns. We focused all of our lessons last week on shape patterns. And then now we're taking all of that amazing knowledge and skill practice that we did and applying it to number patterns, which are a little bit trickier. Then we know um, when a pattern is growing, the amount that you're either adding or taking away is getting bigger each time. Extending is building onto the pattern once we figure out what that pattern rule is. If something is decreasing, it's getting smaller. And if something is increasing, it's getting bigger. And then arrange is how you arrange that pattern. Are you arranging it by shapes or numbers? Is it a growing pattern, a repeating pattern? Um, maybe you're making a pattern with household items that you find. Maybe you're making a pattern with awesome things you found in a walk around your neighborhood. However you're arranging it, that is how you are able to figure out what your pattern rule is. Okay, friends, you guys are doing so awesome with this. I wanted to start working on this sheet here that is called Growing Patterns. So we're going to go through each problem together. I can see here that I've got some shapes and um, some smiley faces, and then all the rest of them are number patterns. But because of the title of our page here called Growing Patterns, I know I'm not going to be looking at any patterns that repeat. So it's going to grow or get bigger each time. And then we have to figure out if we are increasing or decreasing. So we're gonna start looking at this today and then we'll finish it up in some of our other lessons together this week. Um, another thing I want to point out before we delve into this um, worksheet here together is that sometimes you're not adding or subtracting. What? I know, it's weird, right? Sometimes you're just using the numbers themselves, not so much the amounts, if that makes sense. It'll start to make sense to your brain a little bit more as we start to go through this, because looking at our very first one here together. Okay, so it says number one, and then it says one, one. Two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Whoa, when I looked at that the first time, I said, whoa, my goodness. One, two, one, one, two, two, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, four. My brain felt all jumbled up. But then I took a closer look at our pattern. So again, looking at it here, it says one, one, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Is anybody starting to see what that pattern might be? This is an example where we are just using the numbers themselves and not working with um, adding or subtracting and working with the amounts that the numbers are. So again, let's look at it one more time. One, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Do you guys see what the pattern is? One, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. It's growing, right? It's getting bigger each time. So first it was one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. What would our next set of numbers be? If it was one, then one, two, then one, two, three, then one, two, three, four. What would it be next? You guys are so smart. Our next set of numbers would be 
one, two, three, four, five. Just like that. One, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Then what would it be? Yeah, nice job, friends. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's just basically starting over again and again, right? It's starting at one, then it added on one, two. Then it added on again, one, two, three. Then it added again, one, two, three, four. Then one, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. So we wanted to continue extending our pattern. What would the next set of numbers be? You got it, friends. It would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nice job. You see how that kind of seems maybe a little overwhelming at first, but then once we took it apart and little by little, I realized it's just numbers going in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and moving up that way. Let's look at our next problem here as well. Number two says five, six, five, six, six, five, six, six, Five, six, 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 five. All right. How would we extend onto this pattern? Okay, so first it's five, and then there's a six. And then there's a five, and then there is two sixes. Nice. Then there's a five, and there's three sixes. So this is again a pattern where it, we are just using the numbers. You have a five then one six, a five, then two six, a five, then three six. So what would ne be next after that five? We had three sixes the last time, so it would be one, two, three, four sixes. All right, friends. We're gonna stop there for today. We'll come back to this uh, again tomorrow. Thank you so much for all your hard work. You guys are doing amazing and I'm really proud of you. Catch you next time, friends. Bye. in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.